Computer-generated imagery was born in the 60s. It started with a crude line drawing technique called vector graphics. Used in 3D applications called computer-aided design and computer-aided mechanics, vectors were like electronic blueprints in 3D. In the beginning, they were used mostly for engineering, architectural work, and flight simulation. Pretty technical stuff until young filmmakers like Robert Abel realized the artistic potential of this computer imagery. One of the first uses of vector graphics in film was when Disney asked Abel and Associates to create the title sequence for The Black Hole. I said, listen, I've got this vector flight simulator from Evans and Sutherland. And basically, it allows me to move and the object to move in three dimension. So the best I could do would be the point of view of the computer of a rocket ship that was being pulled into a black hole. And uh, all of a sudden, I said, wow, there's a whole world there. In the 1970s, a new imaging system called raster graphics was developed. Where vectors are simple line drawings, raster allowed for full color texture, shading, and lighting effects. The only drawback was that each frame took millions of computer calculations. In its early development, raster graphics required massive mainframe computers and weeks of painstaking work. Despite the limitations of this fledgling technology, Robert Abel continued to break new CGI ground. Developing their own programs and borrowing computer time from corporate giants like Bell Labs, Abel and Associates pushed computers to do more than even their designers could imagine. With a big budget Super Bowl commercial called Brilliance, Abel and Associates forever changed the look of TV commercials. Yeah, because it kicks light up well, and that's another... Better known as the sexy robot, the spot the called for a realistic robot with fluid right, human line. movements. This was an unheard of task for the computer programmers back in 1982, but Abel's team, led by CGI pioneer Randy Roberts, was up for the challenge. To, to, to get this type of a, a helmet on, that? That's pretty good. Um, okay, now the bottom lip looks a little thick. Maybe we should take... Well, translate them all up a little? Yeah, what, maybe from like 25 to 34 or something. Okay, well, I think that looks better. The most difficult challenge was bringing the robot to so life. Can you do that here? Randy looks invented like a technique he called drive. brute force animation. The ABLE team filmed a live model and programmed her choreographed movements into the computer the computer track reference points painted on her body. This data was used to create a vector graphic animated figure. I mean, it seems stupid at the time. I mean, she was in a barber's chair filled with all these black dots and a bathing suit, but it worked. The key to success was for the robot to appear organic, natural. It has to be something where you really can't tell if she's real or if she's computerized. Her movements are very human and she's very sexy but very strong. And you really, you've got to believe it's a human being and yet it isn't quite. Once we got the motion right, we used raster graphics to give the image form and color. The robot, her movements, the details, each reflection, the magic she does with the food, getting all of that into an environment and then adding Jupiter into the picture window. If you can imagine each picture of film, which is a 24th of a second, takes 10,000 or 20,000 add, multiply, subtracts, divides. Well, that's millions of bits of information that the computer has to chew through. In eight grueling weeks, this milestone of computer animation was complete. The art of CGI was greatly advanced, and the world of special effects would never be the same. After Sexy Robot, Abel and Associates went on to create some of the most stunning commercials ever seen. Winning 33 Clio Awards and two Emmys in the process, Abel's work helped popularize computer-generated imagery. 
Abel's television commercials attracted the interest of some of Hollywood's greatest filmmakers, including Steven Spielberg. Spielberg wanted Abel to produce a title sequence for his television series, Amazing Stories, a carefully choreographed historical montage of storytelling. And when he said, I want the most far out computer graphics you could possibly make, it absolutely floored me. 37 fully rendered images were to fly by in 45 seconds, a task that would require more computing power than Abel had ever assembled before. This project was considerably more difficult than Sexy Robot. To create a medieval knight, brute force animation was once again employed to bring computer bytes to life. A human model was filmed and digitized into the computer to define the vector graphic. Then, raster imaging took over and produced the final product. The raster imaging system had advanced to the point where the CGI team was able to select specific, real-life textures and apply them to the wireframe computer models. This process is called texture mapping. The book binding appears to be real alligator leather. The typography is a passage from Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. The skull was created with raster imagery from a real skull scanned into the computer. These minute details allow viewers to experience the animated elements as real objects. In the 70s and early 80s, Abel and Associates became a home to many of today's leading effects artists. The interesting thing about Bob Abel and Abel and Associates, where, where we all worked, is that that was the, the, like, the, the starting point of all this new stuff that we see today. He was like the first person to do it, and he was like the granddaddy of, of this sort of computer graphics. Uh, well, I worked at Robert Abel and Associates for about 11 years, and we did extremely creative work there. We were definitely at the cutting edge of, at, of motion graphics and computer graphics. In 1987, John Hughes and five other ABLE alumni formed Rhythm and Hughes, where they've continued to push the technology toward new creative horizons. 